cool, yeah. Um, so I'm George Bachelor. I'm right now I'm based in Montreal, in Canada, but I'm originally from Manchester in the UK, and then I mostly worked in London for like five years. But I've just moved here, which is nice. Um, yeah, and I guess I make game-like things. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I've released three three of my own games not so far. One was a um, a dog speed dating game called Hot Day. One was a sort of car on the edge of a cliff conversation talking about life game. And then one was a talking to a bird about life game. <laughs> so I guess yeah, a lot of my stuff is kind of talking to an animal about life and death and I yeah I tend to like have every time I can kind of hear my own voice echoing in my head. Oh can you? Hmm. Yeah. Maybe I'll use this. Um. Okay, sorry. It's probably fine. It's okay. Um, yeah, so yeah, most of my stuff is yeah, kind of around that, generally like, yeah, kind of narrative, interactive um, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> that um, cover it? no, I think it's I think it's great because. Uh, I don't know how much of a frame of reference people might have for like uh, talking to a bird about life and death and stuff like um, you know like these are I mean you even call them like game like things um, yeah so so I guess like a good place to start is like uh how did you wind up making these sorts of things, which mm. kind of, you know, they, um, they don't quite tidily, which is not a good or bad thing, they just don't quite tidily fit into the familiar genres, you know, to like a casual video game fan, the yeah, yeah, talking totally. to an animal from a car on a cliff, <laughs> uh, is not a genre that um, <laughs> people might yeah. be familiar with. So yeah, no, ob sure. obviously you took a series of uh, choices where, you know, um, this is a thing that you do and that you repeatedly do. Mm -hmm. Not that you're yeah. not that you're repeating yourself, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. Yeah. I think I'm started. Yeah. A lot of it has kind of been accidental. Like I started off like my kind of day job has been working mainly as a programmer, stealing games. But I was like, okay, I'm kind of doing this. And then, the so, like, I always struggled. I did a kind of similar degree, computer animation -y degree at uni. And I always struggled to figure out, like, what was my, like, voice? What was my kind of style of, of thing? And I never really found it then. But I kind of fell into it when, yeah, yeah, when I started making Hot Day, which was just, it basically just started out as I wanted to do some 3D modeling and make a little character and do some rigging. And I was like, I was doing programming the whole time. Was like, something else like, oh god, this is going to last forever. So I made this character, and then it came when I thought, okay, okay, character was hot. And then suddenly when I started writing, like, like had a sort of, I don't know, yeah. realization that I loved doing it, and I hadn't gone ever really. really. I was like, oh, oh, and so I'm just starting to discover what I actually enjoy doing. And most of what I've been making is kind of trying to think, what do I want to do? What do I want to spend my time doing? Um, and and yeah, can I yeah. go from there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. One, one. It's an annoying thing when I have to release the game. Every website that you publish a game, it's like a drop down. Of 
like, what genre? It's your game. And that kind of, I just, I'm so bored by all that, like, anything that's, I don't know, I, I always try and think in a way that's not, like, Okay, I'm gonna try and make one of those. Or one of these, you know, a thing that's like this. I think maybe it, maybe it, maybe it, maybe it maybe first, first, first. When I was when I was trying to think like that. that. Um, mm. Yeah. But now, yeah, I'm just more just trying to think, trying to just think in a way that. Um, yeah, like what people haven't seen before, or things like that. I think me when I actually when I'm looking at things, what are people, the main thing that I want to see is just something new, something original. You know, like I don't know. As soon as it's got some aspect of nostalgic or even just similar to something else, part of me just loses interest a little bit. You know? How does that? Oh, go ahead. So, so how does that? I mean, because like, um, I feel like maybe even in the course of the time we've corresponded here and there, like something that has changed a bit is it feels like you can safely say that like there's a lot of stuff out there in games, and it can sometimes feel like people in your position are not often making the things that they want to be making because for many factors, you know, it, it is just advantageous to be sticking to those, for starters, just like from that those drop-down menus, those 10 choices that you have there. So, um, and I'm not asking this like, hey, free license to complain, but I am just curious, like, so this, this choice that you've made, you know, professionally, personally, socially, I wouldn't even just say like, well, how does this make life with games harder for you, but how does it make things different for you? Like, what are the sorts of things you find either you need to be uh, more intentional about like how you're translating, like what you mean, or... Uh, uh, or are there no drawbacks? Is it all? <laughs> is it all like? <laughs> it's yeah. all. It's all um, tailwinds, you know. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely not all tailwinds. Yeah, I mean the pro the problem is, like I feel like what I'm trying to make is games that aren't really for people who normally play games, you know, like right. maybe in a lot of cases. And but the issue is that the the places that they exist, the places that they're advertised are places where people who are looking for games are. And people who aren't don't see them, you know? So it, I even thought my last game, Burt Alone, I'd consider just releasing it as an app, like on the main app section. I did in the end I didn't, I released it as a game, but I wonder if it would have been if it would have if it would have worked out. Because I feel like Yeah, the the people who I want to play games, my games, any games, other people who aren't. And those are the hardest people to convince, obviously. So that's like a big aspect of it. Um, but yeah, I think... I don't know. Um, it, I, I constantly kind of struggle with my, like, how I feel about games as a whole, like, I feel like most most things just make me want to kind of back away from it and abandon it and you know not be associated with it. Just just like I don't know trends and things that just the whole games industry thing. But yeah, I mean you're kind of right what you touched on. It. Yeah. I think I think what is interesting now, which I what we're starting to see is people from like it's just easier to make a game now, you know, like a lot of people, artists and people who haven't really thought about it before are making stuff. So I think that's kind of making me feel better about it, you know, just seeing new things, seeing original ideas, different, diverse um, 
artistic views and lifestyles and all this kind of is making some distance I think does it does it feel I mean are there it's such a weird thing to define it by but like are there is it getting lonelier <laughs> where you are um because I feel like for a long time people were saying like oh well and this must have been uh 2013 maybe I remember having a conversation with someone and they were like well it's so clear what the future of video games is going to be because a lot of people in the game space who really only care about the game space they keep making the same sorts of things and you know the imagined future at that point which was seven eight years ago was oh people from quote unquote the outside are going to come in and yeah. embarrass everybody with all these fantastic ideas draw inspirations from outside of games I, yeah. I mean, so th does it feel like, I don't know about the embarrassing side, that's a different thing, but, like, does it feel like that is happening more? Do you feel like there are more and more folks? Like, I can definitely tell you, just like in the time I've been doing this, like, there are starting to be people who I'm going to be interviewing who, like, they haven't made a game before, but they're interested in games, and primarily, you know, they're an artist who works in some other discipline, and you would have been much more hard pressed, I think, to find that you know seven eight years ago. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it is yeah, it is definitely it is happening more, and I think yeah, the you kind of almost you sort of almost need a balance because there's a temptation if you're coming from outside of games. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people like that. I think the the key thing is to have no preconceived no preconceived ideas of what games and interactive things can be because often times you know you'll get someone like that who's an artist from a different discipline and they don't really play games anymore or they you know they're not really aware of it but it, they're seeing that it's an interesting space but yeah often maybe the only frame of reference is games that they played like you know 20 years ago which is when you kind of get a little nostalgia cycle going. So I think like you almost need, yeah, you almost need a balance. Yeah, I guess people who are interested in games, who are, yeah, I don't know if coming in completely blindly. Like what? What? <laughs> this is, I'm, I'm not really making much sense. Well, <laughs> how I've been trying to think recently is, yeah, I'm trying to think, and I try and because I'm kind of working on a new game, which is just. Sort of at the moment, I'm just experimenting and messing around and trying things. But I'm trying to approach every decision by just forgetting everything else, like everything, every other way that this certain thing has been done before, even if it's the most basic thing. Like I don't know how you interact with anything. I'm just I'm trying to just because the temptation is obviously, you know, you go okay, I'm going to add this sort of thing. Maybe it's, I don't know dialogue or whatever. And then you go back through your mind of like, okay, what are all the best ones I can think of? And then you pick the best one and say, okay, I'm going to do that one. You know. But I'm just trying to think of like, okay, what would someone who's who's never seen anything vaguely interactive before, what would they <laughs> instinctively, intuitively want to do, go to do? It's a weird way of thinking. I don't know. Maybe maybe everyone does this, or maybe all designers do this. Um, but it's it's hard to think like that because <laughs> you have to just think yeah, it's, yeah you have to kind of forget everything that you already know and then yeah I don't know I, w I wish there was more things like that I don't know well it's it's interesting I mean because um, I mean so and maybe this is just uh, going to get even further into abstract territory which is fine uh <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I live there, so it's fine. <laughs> um, I have a summer home there. But, um, you know, so you talk about having no preconceived notions. Do you feel like you're approaching it from a place of, like, and it would be interesting to hear, like, how that wound up being, like, a, you know, like a, like a guiding philosophy for you. Um, mm. But, I mean, are you assuming, is, is, is it that you're assuming you're brushing aside all those preconceived notions or are you trying to assume that they're wrong? Because those are 
two different things. And like I feel like oftentimes for me, the way I approach like reporting projects or any big thing where I'm going to put my name on it and do a lot of reporting and exploring is <laughs> I try to be very conscious of all the ways where I think it was done, you know, incompletely. Um, I don't want to say it's coming from a judgmental place of like saying it was done wrong, but I'm like, well, where have other things like this fallen short? And so I feel like maybe that's a more negative place, maybe not, but maybe it's a similar thing of like, it, it stems from the, well, I'm not going to have any preconceived notions about how this is supposed to go, but I definitely want to know where the mistakes are. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, I think do you, which, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny you, you mentioned someone else talking about how it was almost like there were people, every, every you know, game developer was going to get embarrassed by these new, fresh ideas coming from the outside. And I think... That person did not make games, I should say. So, okay, like, okay. I always feel like we're talking some other language when, but I mean, as it is, it often is like anyone in the audience of, um, you know, which obviously includes people who make games. But it's like, well, but we don't really know because we don't make them. So it seems so easy if you don't make them, you know. Yeah, well, that is it's kind of interesting because I think. Um, uh, Oh, wait, sorry, remind me if I have lost my train of thought. Remind me what No, you it's okay. I asked you five questions there. It's basically like, do you feel like, are you coming from a place of no preconceived notions or that the notions that are out there may be wrong? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I think, I guess it's not that they're wrong because probably, you know, in a lot of cases they, what's happened, but what's come before is, has been the best thing. But I guess it's more of just a, like, an idea of, like, does it have to be that way, you know, like, I feel like it's, it's so, it's, it, there's so much space to do something original in games, because, you know, I feel like not that much has been done in it so far, I mean, obviously it has, but everything can, like, so many things can kind of slot into these neat little categories, you know, so it, it almost feels like, why can't there be more of a variety, you know, like, yeah, it's not necessarily saying that other ways are wrong, just like, yeah, is, is there another way, you know, like, can we do things yeah. in a different way, can we, can we, you know, what, I, it's kind of like, yeah, I guess I'm looking more towards interactive, interactivity in general, like, what just, right, happening in, rather than, yeah, strictly. Well, well it's interesting, I mean, because you were saying about, like, because, like, uh, it just you were talking a little bit about nostalgia, and so um, I guess I'm curious, like, you know, how do you feel for the sorts of things you want to do? Maybe this is another version of a question I already asked, but, I mean, how is nostalgia within games blocking progress or some sort of traction in your work? And, I mean, that could even just be, like, you having the ability to, like, <laughs> communicate with other people about what it is you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think... I don't know why I'm particularly fixated on that. I think... Yeah. I think it's just my, like a general way that I view things is just that I want to just see new things all the time. And, yeah. And so... You know anything that's nostalgic. I don't know. It, it feels like if you, yeah, you, it's 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 it just feels easy, you know. Like mm. I don't know. It's um. I just yeah, it just doesn't seem that interesting. Mm. I mean, do you feel like? <laughs> I mean, is it is it questioned that much, or do you do you think others are like even cognizant? And I guess it's not even just limited to, you know, just the games themselves. But it, do you feel like, you know, when you're talking about these things and like the types of new things that are possible, are others aware of like ways in which they may be being nostalgic or? Is that just too broad of a question? Um, yeah, I don't know what other what other people. I think, yeah, what I've got. Um, 
yeah what sorts of things um yeah, I don't know how other people think about it. Yeah, I, f I, th I guess I found this in general of going to games, events, and kind of public spaces where, uh, you know, you're just trying to find those um, like-minded people, you know, that you can talk to about, you know, whatever. But yeah, it always feels like we're the sort of group that's like hiding in the corner and <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> wondering what 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 is what's going on here, you know. Um, what. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think. It, it, Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, I think I think just the thing that I guess you were even talking about this, or you were talking about a Werner Herzog quote, which was probably a while ago at this point in our emails. But you were saying this quote from him. Uh, was this in the thing where he was eating his own shoe? Is that oh, what it was yeah. from? <laughs> yeah, you know the video. There's the video. Which I've never yeah, seen, but I've heard about it. Yeah. It's good. Uh, earlier this this last year. I had like a, a Herzog obsession, so I was just watching like every video, that, you know, all of his films and all these videos that he was in. Just yeah, I think well, yeah, what what I just loved about him was how he's like he's so intense and unapologetic about wanting to be philosophical and poetic about things, and it's just you know, something about that I just kind of like. But yeah, he he <laughs> there's this video where yeah the video where he. He eats his shoe because basically he, I think he he told his mate Errol Morris he was like, look, if you if you make this film, uh, I think it was Gates of Heaven, which is like a documentary about some pet cemetery in the U.S. Right. He's like, if you make this film, I'll eat my own shoe. Um, <laughs> I guess he wanted him to make the film. He made the film. The film's great. He yeah, may have just really wanted to eat his own shoe. <laughs> <laughs> it needed to be held accountable to do it. So he had an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, well, I'm going to make the film anyway. It's like, no, just, I, I'll do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, and basically, this is part of, part of this whole video of where he's, before he eats the shoe, he's talking about how humans, how we as a society don't have adequate images you know he's like he keeps saying this over and over again he's like we don't have i'm not gonna do an impression but he's like, we don't have adequate images you know it's like and i think what he's getting at is just kind of something kind of similar to what i'm trying to get at as well which is just like i mean he and he's coming at it from the film point of view of just like of all the things we could be doing of all the things we could be saying it's like it feels like there's so much more to be said, you know, and I think there's something that he's trying to do in his films by like, you know, contrasting some footage that you've never seen before, you know, of like a volcano or some underneath some sea ice and then he'll put some like Russian monks like singing over the top of it and <laughs> I guess he's trying to create this atmosphere and this feeling of something that's completely new and, it, you know, I think his films for me are a bit hit and miss but when they work they, they've got that perfectly you know they've got that thing where you're like what what am I looking at this is like something that feels completely new completely alien or yeah I don't know it's like it feels think, like a new perspective And I think it's like yeah I mean I think it's even more granular where I think I may be misremembering or what I believe and of course you've seen it and I haven't but I'm I just haven't been able to track down this. I, maybe it's probably on YouTube at this point, as all these things are. But I think, like, he was even talking about, like, uh, never mind, like, an entire movie. It's just, like, so rare you see, like, just a brand new image. Um, and yeah. I may be misremembering that, but... I mean, I, I wonder, too, so, like... And sometimes it feels a little banal to be like, yeah, this thing, but in games, what about it? But, like... It, I think it is worth exploring. Like you t we talk about nostalgia, and we talked about like this pitfall of if someone hasn't been familiar with what's been going on in games for the last twenty years. Um, if there is so much nostalgia, then you know, has there really been that much going on? But like you and I, we can probably think of like, well, look at these great leaps that have happened over the last decade or two. But the perception really hasn't changed much of like what they are. And I think yeah. in a certain sense, nostalgia and, like, for many creators, like, you know, imitating makes sense, right? It's, like, it's how you sort of pave your own runway. 
figure out your own voice, and then maybe eventually you'll get to branch out and create your own stuff. But yeah. for games, now I'll do that thing, that thing, but with games, like for games, like what do you think can often be the biggest block for that branching out, even once you've built a runway? And I guess I ask because you're a person who has done that. I have not talked to anyone else who has made a you're stuck in a car and you're talking to animals about life. Um, that's not a game, that's yeah. not an experience I've had before, but I mean, it's probably not any single block, but like, yeah. you know, is it, that, is it, is it, it's, it's, yeah, go ahead. That, you know, it, it's still a kind of visual trope, you know, and I think, I, think, I guess a lot of people just don't, just don't want to, like, I don't think, I think probably with a lot of people, there's not an ambition to make, to do something that's like, you know, so, and even even my stuff is is still, you know, fairly easily described and not, you know, there's people who have made <laughs> way more like experimental and sure you know, interesting stuff, but um, yeah, I guess I, w I wonder why it is where that like kind of mentality comes from, or well, maybe maybe every maybe this is just the kind of majority of people making everything, you know, where people just want. You see, you have your favorites, and your favorite things are obviously a thing. <laughs> you know, it's your favorite because you know. Maybe you, yeah, people just want to kind of capture some of that, or you know, recreate the feeling that they had, you know, with that, with the thing that they love. But that is inherently going to be, you know, similar to something else. And I wonder if this is just the kind of if. if Every, you know, medium just has its subset of people who wanted to, you know, make that new image that people right. have seen before. Or, you know, if it's, if that just takes a long time to grow, or maybe, I mean, the thing is that, that is, there is, there are tons of people doing it, doing it in games, but maybe it's just not, maybe it's the kind of, yeah, I don't know if the if the if the larger kind of you know public want that or they if you know it creates much of an incentive to do it if, if you're just making things for other people or you know if you if you're just making weird stuff for other creators to be like oh that's cool that's like <laughs> weird, isn't it? or you know if, if people actually you know care. Well, I always think that like whatever there's a lot of people are always going to want to crave the opposite like if the world was full of like nothing but intensely personal films about relationships people are going to want like well it would be nice if we could see something blow up maybe once in a while or you know mm -hmm. if you're eating nothing but like burgers all the time it would be like well maybe a salad would be good but like it may be a thing too where you know does and I don't know, maybe it is much more core. Maybe it's just about ambition, you know, like, and maybe other factors are that it's, like, it's economic and it's cultural and it's, you know, yeah, it's, it's issues with to, inclusion, yeah. It's hard to, like, because, yeah, my, my games are, like, not that popular, you know. It's, it's hard, I guess it's hard if... It's hard to make... To, like, fit that perfect... Because games take ages to make. They take, yeah. they take such a long time. So it's hard to justify it in a lot of ways, you know, it, it, it's hard to get that balance of something, and and probably chances are all these, like, filmmakers that I love and look up to who probably, and the reason I say filmmakers is just because I think there's just more to go off in terms of, you know, but a lot, a lot of the time, these, like, you know, films are also, they have big budgets and they take a while to make, and all those people talk about, like, I also had, like, a John Cassavetes, uh, the phase last year where I watched all of his films and read this book about him and yeah he just talks about how every single film he made was a nightmare to get funding for no and they none of them, they're like almost all of them lost money like he ended up putting his own money into it and they're all commercial failures <laughs> but you know but now you know we see a lot of them as you know some of the artistic value that they have after the kind of commercial side of you know, washed away and we don't really care about that anymore, you know? So, I guess it's probably just going to be a constant struggle of like, you have on the one hand, 
you maybe you can make something that you want to make or you care about, you find find interesting, but you know, chances are it's not really gonna make you any money and you're not gonna be able to live on it. I mean, cause with, with with my stuff I've always had a day job, you know, and I've done I've done the thing I I've not been too worried about whether my own games are gonna make enough money to live off or pay a team or anything like that because I haven't had to and I think probably that's the sort of luxury attitude that yeah most people obviously don't have and if you're in a full time team you don't have so yeah it's harder to make those sorts of decisions I suppose well I think that like I mean it really depends like where you look and that informs the stories that you pick up and the perspective that you have about the ecosystem. So, I mean, like, we can definitely talk about, like, what there's a lack of. Um, and I think we're probably both speaking somewhat from, uh, obviously, at some point we intersected because we're, we were in each other's orbit, but just, like, we're speaking somewhat from the fringes of this stuff, or at least that's how I feel about, you know, where I sit. Um, so, but what about the inverse then? So, like, at the same time, like, what is stuff that's happening now in games that you would have never imagined was possible when you first started making them? Or, heck, even when you first started playing them? Yeah. Sorry to, sorry to swear and say heck. <laughs> <laughs> you could have warned me about that. I know. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Sometimes, you know, I just throw them out there. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, and there, yeah, there is, there's, there's plenty that, um, yeah, that I see where I'm like, oh, cool, this is it, like, uh, uh David O'Reilly, for example, his stuff, I love, like, everything, have you, have you, do you know everything, this game? I do, yeah, yeah. I spoke to David that. a couple of years ago, yeah. Oh, cool, yeah, so that, that. I love everything he's because I think he's coming from the angle of you know he's an artist an animator making films and then he's yeah he's coming I guess that's kind of the perfect perspective of someone who you know is sort of games adjacent making he has an understanding of what what would actually be interesting and has a kind of artistic ambition to make something new um I guess he's another yeah. example of this sort of thing that we're talking about too, yeah. of like someone coming from a different space was interested and the tools, you know, barriers to entry lowered, tools are more readily available and you know yeah. he and he he made the leap. He totally and and it's kind of nice that he's yeah, I I like that he sort of unapologetically includes all of his philosophical influences in his work, you know, like obviously Alan Watts and everything and um, yeah, that, yeah, the, just things like that, where it's like a new interactive thing. Like, yeah. Um, with, uh, thingy, um, like with Ricky Haggett and Dick Hogg, like all their games, again, I feel like they've, they're coming from the angle as well of like, okay, their stuff like I Am Dead recently and Ho Hokum, and it always feels like, what they're trying to do is what's a new delightful interaction that people haven't done before, you know, which is, which right. is great. Like I love everything that they're doing. Cause yeah, we, what you get is something that feels delightful and it makes you feel playful and you're like, you know, cause you, because yeah, you've not, you've never seen it before. And it, it, um, well, so what about for you? Like what, what, how did you wind up, being a person making games about, <laughs> and you said game-like things, I should quote you properly, mm -hmm. you're ga making game-like things uh, yeah. about talking about life, because it would seem like a thing that shouldn't work. Um, <laughs> if, you're, if, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're a person who knows anything about video games, if you're a person who doesn't know anything about video games, you'd be like, well, that sounds interesting, why wouldn't it work? Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, if, yeah for, for me, what made that kind of start to start to make sense was when I started to kind of like incorporate things from what from books I was reading um, 
so with with Far From Noise, that one, at the time I was getting into all this kind of uh, uh, natural, na- like these kind of American nature philosophers about um, transcendentalism and all this kind of stuff. So I was reading all this, finding it really beautiful how they would like, you know, describe a leaf and like talk about ants walking around and all this like beauty of a sunset and all this. So I was reading all this, all these, all these books, and then I, at the time I'd already kind of started with the idea of Far From Noise with a car on a cliff, and then you know. But then suddenly, when I just started to like put a lot of like those words and philosophies and ideas into a character, in that case, it's the character of the deer. It started to make sense to me and feel like some. Of it, it felt like I started to like find what find the sort of angle that I was looking for of like what feels like I'm I don't know you know sometimes you know when you just start something and it, you're suddenly like oh yeah this is it this feels kind of right this feels like um, my voice or whatever so for me that was a big one of just like not being I'm just kind of embracing like putting in ideas and um, philosophies and things from books I was reading just directly into what I'm making and yeah making that a big like central theme so like with Bird Alone a lot of it was yeah again looking at different philosophers who've talked about death and like like how we can find meaning in our lives and all these different things and then that that ended up feeding into the whole like design ethos of the game and every time I'd make a decision it would of like an actual design 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 decision it would be from that angle of like how does this fit with the core like philosophies of what I'm trying to say with the game and also what would the character in the game the bird like be most likely to do in response if they were a real character person being whatever you know like those two things like so are the i mean do you feel like are there things you've learned about yourself or about life in general from having gone through that process of um trying to put that sort of stuff if i can put it elegantly (laughs) <laughs> into like an inter in an, in an interactive rapper. Like, are there things you wound up? Because like I'm definitely very familiar myself with like you. I always describe it as like it's sort of like you kind of parallel park into whatever the point was in the end of like why you did a thing or why it seemed necessary to do a thing. That point may not occur to me until <laughs> years after the fact. Um, yeah. But it occurs to me with 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 these types of games. And these types of experiences you're trying to leave for others, um, that it's plausible, you know, you wound up getting something out of it as well, just from the process of making it. Oh yeah, I mean, hugely, hugely. Like, I guess the main thing is just, I guess this is with everyone doing any, making anything, but it's just feeling fulfilled, you know. Like, hmm. I think before, like I. I you know, like, I like working and having a job and working on other things and it's great and it's fun working with other people and having this sense of purpose and, you know, collective goal and all that. That's great. But the biggest thing is just realizing this, yeah, the, the feeling of just the sense of, like, fulfillment from making your own stuff and, like, um, it's almost like, you know, you have sort of a feeling inside it's like I guess I guess a lot of my my games end up in the like sort of like diaries for however I'm feeling at that point in life <laughs> um, like, so that's been sort of you know just like therapeutic in that sense because you sort of, you know you end up just thinking like okay what what thing am I thinking about the most in this time of my life, you know, and what this age I'm at now, what am I like, what's on my mind, <laughs> you know, I guess yeah. the entire time in my mid-twenties has been 
life, <laughs> death, and existentialism. But, but you know, don't worry, I that goes away the older you get. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in that in that way, I'm, it's kind of be, it's going to be interesting, just seeing like, all right, what am I obsessed with now, in this like phase of life, you know? So it, in that way, it's just nice. It's almost like a way of just figuring out how I feel about something. What am I worried about? Why do I keep mm. writing about this one particular thing? You know, and you end up just kind of, yeah, r- r- working through it, sort of molding it into this cohesive thing that you can, you know, show everyone in a way of saying, "Look, it's me, age 26. <laughs> what do you think?" You know, right? In that way, yeah, that side of it is, yeah, has been good. So, I mean, you talked about earlier, I think, on, like, publishing platforms, these, like, drop-down boxes where you have to tick the box to be like, this is what my game is. Mm. Um, I, I don't know, like, you, you mentioned, you know, your game's not being, like, I mean, not on the level of, like, a Minecraft, for example, but, you know, in the in the interviews outside of this one you've done or the coverage you've gotten outside of, you know, obviously what I'm extending to you here. I mean, does it often feel like the same thing where there's some sort of expected, like, box you have to sort of fit into or there's, like, a drop box, (laughs) drop down box on their end of, like, like, are there, like, I guess I'm just curious, like, what your experience is like, like, interacting with media, like, trying to help spread word. Um... Yeah. About about your work. I mean, is it is it constraining or is it been more receptive than you would have expected? Like has that changed over the course of your work or what's that been like? It's something that I'm really bad at. Um and I'm not asking you to like name names or to, you know, yeah, shots no, shots fired or whatever. It's just like no, it's this fine. is Yeah. Um, I yeah, I guess it's yeah, I've never been very good at it, so I've not done it that much. Um like marketing in general, PR, all that stuff, it's so important for, yeah. Right. Releasing something, and I'm so bad at it. Um, like, with, with, with Bird Alone, I had some um, PR help from there's this company called uh, Posthorn, and they basically did some free PR of just, like, sending emails out to all their contacts. Um, and that was really helpful, because then suddenly a lot of um, journalists saw my stuff and even if they didn't write about it a lot of them played it and were tweeting about it and that kind of thing and like that's something that yeah it's just hard to like get it's hard to like yeah unapologetically tell people why they should care you know oh yeah like you have to you have to be like repetitive and kind of uh, shameless about it you know yeah, and I guess I guess it comes back to me just wanting to wanting originality all the time. Like I feel like if I if I post once about my game, I'm like, okay, it's done now. Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah, it, it still kind of will disappear, and you know, it, it's just um, yeah, I don't know. And in terms of interviews and things like that with people, I've never had, I've never felt that it was too like they were trying to describe. You know, they, they just, like they just didn't know what they were looking at, or they didn't know how to ask the right questions. Because yeah, I think still my stuff isn't that weird, isn't that you know, this fairly simple to talk about, I suppose. Um, but then the same, yeah, in the same sense, yeah, maybe I just don't think I've done it that much. That's um, fair. This yeah. Is that a lot of other people have. Um, well, what about like you know, uh, I guess like people in your neck of the woods um, with video games like and this could include things like critics and media whoever like anyone who's just talking about like whatever things you feel are similar um, like what what tropes are you feeling exhausted by and like just sort of the way people talk about or think about games I guess we kind of already touched on ambition um, being a certain thing or certain types of ambition rather that's kind of lacking but like and this could even be like specific words that just kind of rub you the wrong way um, is there anything like that at all that, that leaps to mind? Um, 
<laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I feel like we've we we we're, we're we're like transitioning away from aggression <laughs> in some sense. Maybe maybe we're not, but it feels to me like we are, and everyone's sort of embracing this kind of softness and coziness, and you know, and that because uh, a lot of that, a lot of the uh, you know the way of describing things as being cozy and wholesome and you know all that uh, <laughs> is, yeah that stuff because you know, well basically you, you, the, um, that stuff is in a way it made people like it made people look at my game Bird Alone a lot more because it was being swept up in that kind of uh, you know way of describing things but it, I don't think it fits that especially because um, I mean the bird dies in the game well, I don't think that's a spoiler because it's kind of it doesn't ruin it if you know that. <laughs> um, um, but I mean, I think because I, when I made the game, I didn't mean for for the, that fact to be like a surprise, you know? Yeah. Um, but it, it was kind of meant to be heavily suggested throughout the game. I think maybe based on people's response. It could have been suggested a little bit more, and they like that. Well, I get emails every day. People would be like, "What happened?" But, um, but I think that kind of. <laughs> but but I think that ultimately, probably that like wholesome angle. Maybe, harmed it in a lot of ways, you know, because people are expecting this thing that's going to give them a hug, when it's not really what I'm trying to do in. Well, I think your website even calls them sad animal <laughs> games. Um, I don't know where you get a hug out of that, other than maybe every everyone wants a hug. <laughs> Just like, don't make me touch the website, people. <laughs> <laughs> no hugs. Just a pop-up. No yeah. hugs. Um, um, but yeah, I don't know. I think yeah, I, people's expectation seems to be either... You know, this is going to be something outrageous and violent, or it's going to be something incredibly wholesome and soft, and it's going to be a farming cafe. You know, and <laughs> I right. think that that kind of I'm sick of that. You know. <laughs> well, what about this too? Because something else you mentioned that I think you're either kind of rolling your eyes at or kind of sick about is, and I hate to present it as if like. Like, the whole, like, way I think games are talked about is, like, well, there's AAA, and then there's indie. Like, it's like, well, they're all games, so that that kind of bifurcation is always it's kind of a thing we all do, but I think it's, like, kind of arbitrary. But, I mean, you had mentioned that you think it's okay to think and talk about a lot of, you know, big-budget games as mindless fun rather than, you know, elevating them to some loftier intellectual plane mm. um, when when do you think this sort of thinking or rhetoric or whatever is like most dubious um, and I guess it's hard to talk about these without seeming to you know I'm not asking you to say like talk about specific actors and the sorts of things they say I know you mentioned like award shows for example is uh, mm. one yeah. instance of this kind of thing but I've often thought like and a question I used to ask people and really don't anymore is like, well, do you think we like expect too much of video games? Like, do they really need to be like? It's okay for some of them to be, but like, you know, like, don't you think like we're maybe trying a little hard, projecting all this kind of like? I guess it's the thing you're talking about, and I would rather hear it from you because I already know what I think. But yeah, I mean, like, when is it kind of? most dubious or what's a classic example of this sort of thing that just kind of makes you scoff, you know? Mm, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the yeah, award shows in particular are just so embarrassing to watch, I find. I don't know. Like, um, and it, yeah, I think it, it just comes down to people just not really... Yeah, not really knowing how to treat them, and even I don't. Like, I don't really know how we can approach it because, yeah, games has this kind of identity crisis of, what, you know, what it's been before, what audience has been before, and how games have been marketed. Yeah. For the past twenty years or whatever, and now we kind of it's sort of changing, but yeah, it's in this 
it feels like it's in this weird teenage awkward state where yeah you have and the, you know the way I play games and interact with them is like similar to how I you know feel about films and books you know like some of them some of them are just what you go to when you want to just like sit back and be blasted with entertainment you know that's fine right that everything kind of has that category but then you have other other ones where you're like yeah, okay I'm ready to be challenged and devastated now I'm gonna like you know do this <laughs> I'm ready to be devastated <laughs> I'm ready <laughs> I'm in a place now yeah take me down don't don't hug me <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't know I think probably I don't know maybe I don't know if, if you do this as well but you know you just like okay I'm gonna sit down and watch this like difficult movie or I'm gonna like Okay, I'm going to start this like heavy book that's going to be boring, but I'm probably going to come out the other side feeling, you know, wiser and more enlightened, you know. And they, same with games, right? And but well, for me, it always yeah, feels like it always feels like travel. Like it's like you tackle a thing like that. Maybe tackle is not the right verb, but to me, it always like in a good way, it makes the world feel like a smaller place where, like, you get in the habit of doing that, and then, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think, like, um, things that are, like, maybe I just don't understand that frame of, like, intellectual loftiness from a video game. Like, to me, these things are not that distinct, you know? It's, like, stuff I spend my time with that does not necessarily define me as a person, like, I don't, like, like, to me, I always thought it was, like, super magical about video games that, like, they could take you out of yourself for a while, and you're distracted, and you're occupied, and, you know, whether you're playing for the story or not, maybe it gives you something to think about, but I don't really think about books or movies that way either, you know, like, it's like, I, I want to be open to some sort of experience, I'm not like, okay, world... <laughs> challenge me and there are definitely <laughs> books and movies where it's like heavy subject matter or you know it's got a very experimental presentation but I'm like well isn't there room for all of it and I don't understand with games why we can't just be like yeah this was a big expensive milkshake basically you know what I mean it's like yeah. it's it's not a, it doesn't need to have fiber in it yeah. um yeah. It was so and yeah, kind of and maybe it's okay to like game. delicious <laughs> things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think that like the, the well, go ahead. I mean, just like the usual way that stuff is discussed is like, well, there's a lot of insecurity around video games, and there's a lot of self-importance, and it's like, well, but they have that in film too, but they don't make a big deal about like how every film has to, you know, elevate your soul or something like that. And it's the same with literature, you know, but. Maybe it is just a byproduct of the medium being younger, but I don't know. I feel like it's a thing that like can be pushed against, and it's just like <sighs> to recognize that like maybe games can be a part of your life, and that they can be part of like a life that's like full of more than one emotional or like mental mm -hmm. frequency. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like you think you reckon that yeah, that it's sort of treated as a kind of a lifestyle and a, a life-defining. Thing. Right. Like someone right. who likes and plays games. Yeah, yeah. You're like, yeah. You're a, you're a, you're a gamer. You know. It's like a it's like a yeah. A defining characteristic rather than you know. You you wouldn't say like oh I'm a reader. You know. <laughs> like. <laughs> I maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe people do. I don't know. Maybe that maybe maybe there are. Maybe there's a similar kind of culture of readers in the book. And then the writing literary world I don't know but it, right. yeah, it must be that kind of thing where yeah it, it feels uh, yeah it's a kind of sore, a sore subject because there's too much identity woven in right it. well I wonder like you know so what about the inverse of like well these are things that feels like you know uh, you understand or you've internalized pretty well, but, like, what about, like, just over the span of, like, 10 years or... Like, I guess I'm just curious, like, is there a thing you can talk about with, like, a person or an idea or a position 
about video games that like you just couldn't wrap your head around ten years, but now you kind of or completely understand. Because I think like everyone's on some version of that kind of journey with you know the relationship with this stuff, right? Is like well. You know, I've learned to be kind of skeptical of the identity thing, but, like, what's something that, like, you know, you just couldn't wrap your head around and maybe now or even recently you kind of do? Hmm. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything... My, yeah, my, <laughs> my main thing is, like, the, the, more, the, the longer I'm in games, the more I find I'm just kind of, like... Still wanting to be a part of it, but also just slowly stepping backwards and just imagining I'll just throw things in and then, you know, move further away. Um, While keeping one foot in it or keeping yeah, one t- toe yeah. in it? I yeah. Still, I still, like, really love it as a, as a medium and a thing to do. Um, but just everything around it, I'm just, like, a bit bored of or a bit... What, what's, what's the everything? around um, it just I guess just uh, um, yeah what do I mean by that um, I don't know um, well I mean is it like because I always and I really want to stop saying it but I find myself saying it all the time but you know like the kind of silos that are around just any community, but like just, or any online community, or just like, you know, like it's even that thing where it's just like, well, video games are just another example of, there are lots of perceptions, and then inside there are like denials of those perceptions, and then there's just like these very strict orthodoxies of like the ways you can talk about certain things, the ways you're not allowed to think about certain things, and then just the revolving door of like the same handful of topics that get relitigated again and again and again. Um, so like when you say everything, that's sort of the everything that I'm sensing around it because I think about it a lot. But I also know a lot of people too who, whether they make games or not, they go through this similar thing. And it's a big reason like why I started doing this is like, yeah, there's just something about games where <laughs> people tap out at a certain point, you know, you don't tap out. Maybe, maybe yeah. a lot of people do tap out on reading. That's a different thing, but it's very rare to be like, yeah, I don't watch movies anymore. Yeah, I don't watch TV anymore. Yeah, I don't eat. I don't eat food anymore. You know, I'm retiring from. Yeah, no, I think. Yeah, I think you've got it when you say about the revolving door of things that people talk about. I'm just like, oh, uh. <laughs> like, oh uh, yeah. It's. It, I think it's probably that. Just kind of. It just. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to tell you what your everything is, but that's sort of maybe yeah, your everything no, is a different yeah. everything. Yeah, I think it was one of those like hey, I had a kind of feeling, but I don't really know how to articulate it. But yeah, I think that just yeah, just the same the same things that people talk about. Yeah, I, I'm just like just not really interested in them largely. Um, <laughs> I'm just, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm I'm just trying to. Yeah, just look to different things, different uh, mediums and, and right art forms. Just it just feels more less exhausting. So uh, we'll stay in this kind of abstract territory here a little bit longer. Like, and I don't know if you f- feel like you know you have a lot of peers in games or people who feel or, like, have similar goals. It's possible, maybe not, if you're talking about just kind of wanting to distance yourself. But if you do, um, how do you find the people around you who are making games? Like, how do they typically define success? Like, you know, like, what... And it could even just be, like, well, the success is I get to make another game because of the game I made. Um, or does that just not really apply to like the folks that you're around? Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. What is it? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, yeah. I think a lot. Yeah. A lot of. Yeah. A lot of the people. A lot of people I know in games are people I've yeah I've worked with, and yeah, there, there are not there are not as many of those people who are also individually making their own 
Right. But yeah, I think yeah, the measure of success is can because I guess this is my own measure of success is can I can I do this without needing a job at the same time, you know? Um, right. Or you know maybe that's like a kind of is this actually you know a thing? But also, I mean for me, I, I'd say I feel like yeah, something is a success if. If you just, if people just get what you were trying to, what you were trying to say, you know, or if someone just a message know, received, yeah, yeah, totally. Like, and I, yeah, I've heard this from friends as well. It's like I've, a lot of people I've spoken to, they're like, "Look, I'm gonna make this, and you know, maybe it'll be a smash hit, maybe it'll not be." But, you know, if you just, if I just get one message from someone, one email from someone where they say, like, oh, you know, this is great, you know, I, I really, like, had this connection with this thing, and I see this thing, and you're like, oh, okay, that's fine, then. That was, that was, <laughs> that was what, I call that one a success, yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's a kind of measure as well. It's either, yeah. Even, yeah, even if you can't, if you can't, like, keep doing similar things, full time it's like well can I do it as I'm doing it and still connect with some people and you know, <laughs> feel like you did something worthwhile and well yeah. so the, so let me ask you then a, a crass question we're in the crass section of uh, <laughs> these, these questions now so what what would you make if money was not an issue you know is there some sort of dream type thing that Maybe maybe it's embarrassing to answer in an interview, but there's no ju there's no judgment here. Just curious, like yeah, yeah. If, when you if, if I don't know because for me, I just really love doing things on the scale that I am. Like I, I like being, and it's like the things I like doing in games. I like I like doing the writing. I like doing the art and doing those things. But they're things that I don't feel like I'm. I don't feel confident enough to. Uh, I could do them professionally, you know? So as soon as you're like, okay, you have this money, suddenly it's probably taking away the things that I actually want to do with my own stuff, you know? Things that I actually feel <laughs> fulfilled by. So really, if, if, if money was no object, I would probably... <laughs> it would all go to me. No, I would... Yeah, I think... <laughs> hey, this is your fantasy, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the big thing would just be, yeah, like working with musicians and things like like music is just one aspect of games that I just am completely incapable of doing myself um, so that's something yeah I just would love to work with more musicians because yeah one kind of interesting thing that I'm seeing now is people are starting to people are starting to work with Music. I mean, I guess maybe people have always been doing this, but I think it's like I'm seeing it more these days. I think we have people working with musicians and artists from outside games, you know. Um, uh, yeah, so that kind of thing would be interesting. But yeah, if money was no object, the last thing I would do <laughs> is make some huge, uh, huge game. Because I think as soon as you start getting down that territory, that's when you are going to just lose whatever it is that you're trying to do, you know, it's like, it's too, it's too, you can't, you can't make something where a lot of it is just dicking about and experimenting and messing around if you have loads of people involved and, you know. So, yeah, I don't know. Well, so, and then just to get more crass, I mean, I understand this is, like, probably not a thing you've crunched the numbers on, but... I think just because people who don't make games have no sense of this sort of thing, like, so I think that's, you know, that seems like an attainable thing if you wanted to, but how much money does it actually take to, to do that, you know, if you wanted to, I guess here you're talking about just like you would like to collaborate with some other people and you wanted to be musicians. Um, mm. Do you have any sense of yeah, like, what that, that might much. actually cost? <laughs> no, I know. It's like yeah, I suppose it. Yeah, I'm not it's like it's, it's like goal goal wise. It's like well, it would be nice to have like an ottoman and I could put my feet up. <laughs> to be honest, I think 
I think I have such I, I think in like in such like a pragmatic way. That I, I don't allow myself to have like no, I can relate. dreams, you know. So everything that I think of, like game ideas that I think of, there are always things that I could feasibly do, you know, without too much help. Because otherwise, I just don't want to get my hopes up. <laughs> I don't think I. To be honest, I just think I haven't thought about it. You know, maybe a lot of people have this thing, this dream idea that they're like, okay, one day I'm going to make this thing and it's going to be amazing. It's going to be my magnum opus. And but I don't have that at all. I think I'm just like. I just go from one thing to the next. If I have one idea, I'm like, whoa, I had an idea. And then I'll like <laughs> spend like two years trying to like poke it and figure out what it, what it was. And then, you know, yeah, I think I'm just like have a, a small uh, peripheral vision of, of things. So yeah, I guess, I guess it, that kind of, it doesn't cost that much. Probably to do that. <laughs> I've already, I've already been doing it. So, um, yeah. <laughs> well, um, so I have, I have just one last, uh, one last question here for you. Unless was there um, something else that you wanted to to get into, or you wanted to mention, or you wanted to explore? Um, no, I think we've, I think we've, 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 okay. we've done it all. <laughs> well, after this, we will. Um, so uh, I'll ask you this last question, and we can go from the, the, the small scale to the uh, super abstract again. Um, what do you think video games have accomplished? Oh, God. What have they accomplished? <laughs> yeah, it's... Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, what well, have they accomplished? Hey, I'm asking the questions here. <laughs> very this is going to be me for the next week. I'm just like st- staring at a wall like, okay, I want to be accomplished. Um, I don't know. Yeah, you, you've, quit, you've quit making them. It'll all be my fault. Yeah. <laughs> You're just staring at the wall trying to figure it out. Yeah. Well, um, and it's, not a, it's not an accusatory question or a loaded question. It's just sort of like, well, what, you know, what, think, what, what seems to leap to mind? Like what you were saying earlier about um, you know, creating identities and something for people to feel is theirs or to feel. Because I feel like, you know, artistically, the video games have accomplished things, but it's like we're getting there, you know? <laughs> like, it's, you know, if, if you look at the, the, like, you know, for a year... The, the the you know the, the BAFTAs of of games you know or like the top the top things it it feels like only a small fraction of that are things that seem really like artistically unique and kind of new and interesting but also polished and like you know appealing because that kind of balance but so it's like that we're kind of getting there but I guess it must just be some kind of bigger sense of people feeling kind of a sense of belonging and inclusion and the thing that is also the issue <laughs> right like right you know it's it's that's probably the biggest lasting most significant thing about it but also yeah a lot of problems I think, I think it would be good if we could just split everything in two you know and just have like just keep Keep all that. Keep all the kind of big blockbustery stuff. That's that's fine. That can stay. But then just like se- kind of separate everything out and create a new like that can be called video games, and then we'll have something else which can be everything else. Which <laughs> so they just because it feels just almost almost pointless to have like you know experimental indie stuff just the same thing. We should just create a new. And you can't agree with things.